We all know that a virtual private cloud or VPC is an on-demand pool of shared computing resources that can be customized as per our requirements and which is allocated within a public cloud environment. This basically helps us providing a certain level of isolation between the different organizations using the same resource or the shared resources so that you have a sense of closure between your applications knowing that no one else is going to use or access the resources that you have. And that's the beauty of VPCs. Now let's see what Amazon has to offer with its cloud hosting platform in the form of a virtual private cloud. So now let's start off with something that AWS tells us about VPCs. So with the help of VPCs, you can provision a logically isolated section of AWS cloud where you can launch AWS resources in a virtual network that you define. So as we already discussed before, Amazon VPC is an on-demand pool of shared computing resources that can be customized as per our own requirement and which is allocated within the AWS cloud environment. So everything that you know about virtual private clouds remain the same but shift the cloud infrastructure to be on AWS, that is our own cloud provider. And AWS in the form of VPC is going to provide you an isolated environment to securely host your applications and services. And as it has been already rightly mentioned here, Amazon Virtual Private Cloud, Amazon VPC, lets you provision a logically isolated section of the AWS cloud where you can launch AWS resources in a virtual network that you define. So here we are going to define the VPC and AWS is going to provide us with the resources. Okay, as we said, it's going to be private. Let's see what are the configurations or what are the configurable features that we get. So you get complete control over your virtual networking environment right away from the selection of your own IP address range, creating your own CIDR blocks, creating your subnets. You get the provision to configure the route tables as per your requirements and you can configure your own network gateways and you can also make use of both the IPv4 and IPv6 IP configurations. Here you can create your public facing subnets for your web services or web servers that you have uh, so that they have access to the internet by configuring it with the internet gateway and as well provide the restriction to your own customers by using customer gateways and by using VPC only subnets. And not just with public facing endpoints, if you wish to have it secured, you can also place your backend systems such as databases or applications and in a private facing subnet with no internet access so that only you and your applications have access to these resources. And the security provisions don't stop there. With VPC, you get multiple layers of security with security groups and network access control list where you can protect both your instances and your subnets as well. So I have used a lot of heavy words here and I'm aware of the fact that you may or may not be aware of these terms, but nothing to worry about them. We will be discussing them in detail in the upcoming sessions as well. So if you haven't subscribed already, now it's the right time. So now let's see what are the concepts that we need to be aware of in order to get the maximum confidence when we talk about VPCs. And let's understand the terminologies and we will take these terms as our benchmarks to cover VPCs. So we have three types of users here who are going to consume our application and we need to design our VPC so that we can host the application and provide our services to these users or customers or even the people who are at our on-premise location. So here we have the people who are accessing the public internet and we have our customers who are going to use the application that we have hosted for them. And we have our on-premise environment where our developers at our different locations are trying to use our AWS cloud infrastructure. So we have to design our VPC in such a way that we can make our services available to all the users. But please don't get worried about this. If you don't understand these terms, please don't think much about them. We will be covering them. That is the main goal of this one. So that you, if you don't understand these terms, then you will be able to understand them in the upcoming sessions. Okay. So that is the benchmark that we are going to set for us to understand VPCs. Okay. So here we have our AWS cloud and that is where we create our VPC. And when we create the VPC, we try and host our applications across availability zones for high availability. Here it is on AP South 1A. 
So as we already spoke about, we can create both public and private subnets and our security groups behind which we can place our instances to have further control over the access. So here we have both our private and public EC2 instances and then we have the route tables which contain a set of rules called routes that are used to determine where network traffic from our subnets or gateways is directed. And then we have the network access control list that acts as a security group for the subnets. And there is the NAT gateway that we have which helps private instances to access the internet and access the other AWS resources as well. Next up, we have the direct connect to the on-premise location with AWS VPN gateways or what we call as our virtual private gateways. Then we have the site-to-site -site VPN connection along with the customer's gateway to connect to our customers so that they have access to our hosted applications. And then we have the VPC endpoints that enable us to create a private connection between the VPC and other AWS services without requiring access over the internet. With VPC flow logs, you can capture information about the IP traffic going to and from the network interfaces in your VPC and that actually can be published to CloudWatch and S3 as well. And then we have a very popular service that is known as Internet Gateway which allows communication between your VPC or our VPC and the internet and that's how our applications or the programs that we have are able to access the public internet. And next up is the VPC peering which helps us to establish a network connection between two VPCs that enables you to route traffic between them privately. And last but not the least we have our AWS private link as well. This is a very important service as well and it has revolutionized things in AWS VPC which provides private connectivity between VPCs, AWS services and on-premise applications securely on the AWS. Okay, this was a lot of information, but if you know these topics, it's well and good. But if you don't, then please don't get scared of this. When you understand these terms and when we complete this session of VPCs and the list of videos that we have on VPCs, you will be able to explain this diagram and this architecture that we have here to others like a pro. I guarantee you that. So let's again highlight some of the important points that we have here. So we have the route tables here, we have the VPC NAT gateway and we have the network access control list and from the VPCs we move ahead to CloudWatch and AWS and from VPC flow logs we can capture the logs to AWS CloudWatch and AWS S3 and from our VPC internet gateways that we have here we can connect to DynamoDB that is uh, our another AWS service and to the users as well. And with site to site connection and the customer gateways, we are able to connect to the customers and we have the VPN gateway that we have here or the virtual private network gateway that we have. And we are able to connect to the on-premise uh, instances that we have using the direct connect. And we have the private link here that you see, this is also very important for us to remember that can provide us private connectivity between our VPCs, our AWS services and on-premise applications securely on the AWS. And we have the VPC peering as well, which helps us to establish a network connection between two VPCs that enables you to route traffic between them privately. Okay, so I hope you are able to understand these terms and you will be able to understand these terms very soon. And once we are done with this, you will be able to get hold of all the topics that we have here and all the terms that we have here. So make sure you watch all the videos that we put on the channel. Okay, for VPCs.